first panelist is Neha Shah. She is in Michigan, Ann Arbor, Michigan. She is going to work with us on how to start seeds indoors. So I will just hand it over to Neha. Hi, everybody. Um, so I am a fifth grade teacher in the Ann Arbor Public Schools um, in Michigan. Uh, the Great Lakes State. And so I'm a school garden coordinator. I'm also a teacher. I teach fifth grade. Um, and um, I'm also the co-chair of the Farm to School Collaborative, which we focus on procurement and school gardening and everything farm to school, which is super exciting. Uh, so today I made a video for you. Please don't laugh at me, but you'll enjoy the first part of it, I'm sure. Um, but I made a video today uh, to show you how to start seeds at home. Um, it's a pretty uh, easy idea. Um, mainly it will just tell you kind of the materials that you're going to need and what you're going to do um, and how you can get uh, started at home. So enjoy. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Seed Starting 101. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about seed starting and how you can start seeds at home in a pretty easy and simple way. All right, so we're going to start with a materials list. You're going to need a heating mat, tray, dome, pots, labels, tape, soil, seeds, a gardening journal, watering can, spray bottle, scissors, sunny window or grow lights, some cinnamon, permanent marker, calendar, ruler, and obviously some love. So this is my table and I have everything here and ready to go. I want to lay everything out because I like to be organized. I find it helpful when I'm seed starting to have everything that I need out on my table. Now I've got my organic seed starting um, soil here and I've got it in a nice little bucket here which is easy for me to load up if I need to or um, just put the soil in the trays and I'm looking for really good soil that's fluffy and light nothing too compact or dense want to be able to scoop it pretty easily so that I can put it in the in the pots in the tray when I need it and um, other things that I have there's two different types of pots you can get as many different types of varieties as you want this has four um, four little cells here and it's easy to plant things in here and then transplant them later. If you want something a little bit bigger, you can do that. They fit nicely in a tray too, um, depending on what you're planting. Other things you're gonna need, some labels. I like the color-coded ones, but you can get any. Um, they generally come in white. These are plastic, but um, you can use a Sharpie to write on them and label them. I have two small watering cans, not necessary. However, this one is pretty small. It's helpful to plant to, I mean, to water some of the little baby seedlings that are like oregano and things that have that are really fragile. And then these I can just use, this one I can just use to fill the bottom of the tray when I need to up with some water. Uh, some scissors just in case. Definitely need this. You need this guy because he's really easy to write with, but you also need a garden planner. Something to write down what you need. Um, or kind of just notes and things. So, for example, in here, I've got uh, some uh, things that I've planted and the dates and the germination time. And then later I'll put it in a calendar and kind of let myself, um, or I'll just remind myself when I need to harvest things. So, um, other things you might need are some seeds. So, I've got a lot of seeds here. The reason I'm showing you this one is because it's labeled and they're organized um, and they're alphabetized. If you see my seeds, um, all of them, they're all alphabetized just so it's easy for me to figure out where they are um, because I also often have a lot. So I like to just have a place for that. I've got my labels. Oh, here's a ruler too. Ruler for um, seed depth and spacing in case you need it. And also um, I've got labels that I labeled ahead of time. I like to do that so I don't get lost in what I'm planting. So I try to label them ahead of time. I've got some arc varieties here that I'm going to plant some lettuces. And so I have them ready to go, not worried um, about kind of messing up what I did or forgetting. And then a letter opener I use, um, you can use the scissors too to open seed packets and things. Generally just easy um, to have. Okay. And then here is my pre-made tray. Um, I like to pre-make them again. 
easy. Just put, just you just measure it out already. Get ready for to plant, and then I'm ready to go. So what I can do um, is just take my seed packet. I can unpack it put the seed in there and then label it really easily. And this is not labeled in the right order, I see. So I have to make sure I double check, which I'm doing right now. There we go. We're all set now. And that way then I can just put the seed in here, ready to go. And I can put my label in here and I'll know that if I do a cell of four, that I'll have four here together. Um, okay, other things you might need um, are some cool signs. <laughs> and then um, some cinnamon, and I'll talk about that in a minute, and some tape. And then a place to put the seeds after you have um, seeded. So all of these back here are things I've already seeded, kind of thinking about making sure that I have them here so I know um, and I remember. And all of these packs mostly still have seeds in them, so I want to keep them in a special place just in case I need to refer back to the seed packet. I like to keep them out and ready. And then just I have other seeds that I might, um, I want to plant soon or today even um, at some point. And so that's what I have for that. Okay, uh, so now I've got the seed and I'm ready to plant it. And what I like to do with lettuce seed, and so sometimes you just want to look at the seeds that you're planting, is kind of stick it into a little container cup like this because you can just see look how tiny these babies are. And I don't want to lose any of them because they're my friends and I want to be really, really aware that we are trying to make sure that we keep all of our seeds and we save them and protect them. And so I look at each and every single one of these as being very important. And so I don't want to lose any of them. So um, I have this little cup here and you can really use anything, a bowl. And I'm just gonna kind of put it a couple in my hand. And what I'm going to do is just take a few of those and put them in, plant them right back in the hole um, where I had set it up. And then I'm going to gently kind of put pat it a little bit, put a little soil there, and just pat it. So then I know kind of with my two fingers that that's been planted. And I'm just going to keep going and continue this cell of four because it's, it's good to just do all at once so... Um, oftentimes if I'm seeding I might forget so I just want to double check and so they're in there I'm saying I love you guys and please grow you are awesome please have a wonderful time germinating you can see I decided to do eight total cells here and now that I've done these eight cells what I tend to do is do the rest but I'm just gonna show you how I like to water. I like to make sure that when I water, I'm going very slow, kind of simulating, um, you know, a little bit of rain. Um, and I just go a little slow. I don't wanna go too fast because the seeds will move around and that's okay, it won't do any harm, um, but they'll move around a little bit. And then I just like to fill it up and let it kind of go um, right down in there, soak in, and then I'll give it another soak after that. I want to make sure that they're nice and wet and that they stay like that over the next, you know, 10 days, 7 to 10 days, depending on their germination, or even longer, depending on when the seed packet tells you. These don't tell me specifically because they're saved, so I'll just look it up and see if I can find out. All right, so another thing I want to talk about is the seedling heat mat. This is kind of what it looks like. I like to use this when I'm seed starting because um, when you have a mat, it actually warms the rooting area to improve germination and rooting. So it's really nice to have it. Um, it generally heats up real quickly. You can just um, you know plug it into a 120 volt power source and, um, and you just wanna make sure that it's on a well drained surface so that way it's not kind of, you know, you don't want to have any standing water with it, of course. Um, and so it just raises the rooting area temperatures pretty much, um, I'd say 10 to 20 degrees above the air temperature. And that's what you really want because you want to create a nice greenhouse effect and a nice warm um, environment, which is awesome to have, especially when you're germinating. So I put the tray right on 
the mat, um, making sure that the, um, you know, the entire uh, tray is right underneath there. And another thing I like to do is have a dome. So I've got a dome here that I got at my um, downtown home and garden, which is a local business that, um, you know, provides these types of things. This one has ventilation here too. You can open this and there's some on the side. Not all of them come with that and that's fine, but it's nice to just put this right on top, leave it there nice and snug after it's been watered and it creates this really great greenhouse effect. Um, and it actually really speeds up your germination rate a lot faster than they even say on the seed packets, um, which is really exciting. And as you can see, they germinate um, well, and they're, they they turn into these, these beautiful babies. And um, it's, it's actually good. And at night, sometimes I'll cover them. It just depends on how cold it is. Uh, here in Michigan, our, our spring temperatures fluctuate quite a bit, but generally they do pretty well because they're still on the heating mats. Will my garden grow? Absolutely. It says, yes, definitely. Woohoo! So you can see here the finished product. And a lot of these babies have come up um, here and there, depending on their germination. Um, and they're doing pretty, pretty well, actually. Um, and it's very interesting because when you have house plants and other things like I do, sometimes you get things called fungal mats. So that's where the lovely cinnamon comes in um, play. And as you can see here, uh, I have just dumped some cinnamon um, in here. When I first start, I actually, um, I actually do put the cinnamon right on top. And I'll show you kind of how I do that. Um, I just literally dump it just like that, just to make sure. It's kind of a natural um, deterrent of fungal mats. They don't tend to, so far, so good, um, come over and bother it. Also, it smells delicious. And, um, and so that's just kind of a preventative. There's other ways to prevent that. You don't want to have your... Seedlings always um, too wet and moist to attract them, but um, I have not had any issues with this technique, and it's just kind of an extra bonus thing that I like to do. It's kind of fun, um, but also um, when these guys are kind of popping up out of the ground, I do use, like to use a spray bottle here. I'm not going to spray them right now, but I do like to use a spray bottle to give a little mist. Um, if I by accidentally put some cinnamon on there, which sometimes tends to happen and drop on the leaves, then I'll just spray it off um, right away just to make sure that they are happy and they're doing well. And as you can see, we have some beautiful seedlings. We've got some spinach and some spearmint and lavender and some sage and tomatoes and all kinds of great things getting ready um, here in Michigan to plant. Um, we do the, these tomatoes generally and herbs early. I like to have the herbs just ready in my, my garden anyway to get to some, for some spring cooking. But I like, we like to start some um, of these nightshades early because it takes some time um, before they can go on the ground. So I hope that you have enjoyed the seed starting video and it was helpful to you. Um, I'm here to ask, answer any questions if you have any and happy Easter. I just want to uh, make sure you understand you do not have to use plastic. Um, I do understand that people don't want to use plastic and I 100% um, you know support that and so things you can do are use egg cartons and things like that they're easy. It can just plant honestly really in the ground um, and they will biodegrade but I, the trays that I use are reusable and um, the plastic uh, that I do use, you can reuse it. Sometimes it's a little tricky if they're thin plastic, but um, a lot of times what I can do um, often, and I wanted to show really quick, 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 is you can just use the seed tray like this and just plant them that way if you don't want to use the plastic. This is reusable, so you can use this again um, and again, and you can just wash it with soap and water and then you can um, kind of cut your seedlings out with a butter knife and that's an easy way to do it if you don't want to use the plastic cells. 
Excellent. Thank you so much, Neha. And I know that I, and for all the seasons that I didn't quite make it in time for seed starting and I bought starts at the garden store, that's what I plant all of my seeds in. So I just save them every year in a little tote in the garage and then I bring them back out. And this year, I, this year now that we're home, I got my seeds in those little guys. So just hang on to those and reuse yeah. them. And I, just make sure you wash them with soap and water every year. Perfect. Thank you so much, Neha. We're going to switch over to Ohio with Cynthia. Hello, everyone. I see some familiar names um, running across the scre uh, screen, so that's just amazing. So I'm a classroom teacher. Well, at this point, I guess I'm an online teacher um, and a school garden educator. I'm also one of the leads for Slow Food School Garden. Um, the network, and then I also sit on the Slow Food Policy Steering Committee. So it is my hope that everyone is looking at the situation that we're in as a, an opportunity. So number one, to understand why good nutrition, real food is vital for our school children, and also to take action. Our policies are shifting towards creating a better and more just food system. So this is a wonderful opportunity to work with fierce allies to make this happen. So low tunnels, I'm gonna show you a vid video about low tunnels. Um, it is all season growing. It works phenomenally with uh, school children because they can grow during the school year and they can harvest before they leave for the summer. But low tunnels within communities invigorates local food systems. So it increases the availability of hyper-local food during these cold months. So um, it is a project near and dear to my heart. I've worked with this low tunnel um, system with schools at my own school, and it has expanded to Columbus City Schools and other school districts. So let's go ahead and see low tunnel growing. Hello friends, come on over here. And by the way, thank you to my daughter, Candace, who is the camera woman. She is a freshman in high school and this is part of her homeschooling. So let's plant. We're gonna direct sow seeds into a garden bed. So come on over, let me show you the tools that we're gonna be using and supplies. So right here for putting the garden bed together, we have our boards, we have some gloves, tape measure, drill. We have a couple different types of deck screws and we are going to be using brackets later, all right, to attach to the outside of the garden bed. Um, we also need some weed barrier and we'll staple that uh, into the bottom part of the bed to prevent weeds from growing through. And along with that, we have our water source and hose. Um, we will be planting cool weather seeds. Um, and here's some varieties of that. And I just want to put a little plug in for our plant of seed. Um, these are Arcata uh, seeds, and that would satisfy the, the beans part. But we're going to focus on lettuce today and planting those. And um, over here, but first I do want to point out the soil. Um, you do want to have a mixture of soil that is a third compost, a third of peat moss, and a third of vermiculite. But I'm going to be using what's called zoo brew, and you can guess what's in that in my garden bed, just because it's my favorite and I can get it locally really easy and free. Um, so let's go over here and I'm going to show you a few more things. So right here I have the materials that we are going to use to do square foot gardening. And you can tell that I've gridded that out. Um, obviously after the bed has been constructed. Um, and here are the tools that I used to put hoops over. This is PVC pipe and we cut it down to eight inches based on my four by eight bed and we're going to secure it um, 
we're going to use either fabric or plastic depending on the temperature and here is the plastic and fabric for that and there's a couple different ways to secure it also temperature i have this into the soil uh, to read the temperature of the soil and also the air temperature as well uh, one last thing before we start is perhaps fencing so i do have fencing to go around the garden um, to keep the deer out so that will go up later once the seeds uh, germinate and start popping out of the ground all right so let's uh, start back here and what um, I did is, with help, is construct using the deck screws the garden bed itself. And then we also put the brackets on the sides. We used a larger bracket and a smaller bracket, so it is flexible up here but secure down here. And you can tell where the um, weed barrier is right here. Um, it is a little bit of work, and I suggest that you have someone handy to put in the um, the poles for the low tunnel and this is what's going to allow you to grow when it gets chilly now the temperature outside today is oh it's going down to about 50 and i am in central ohio which is a 6a growing zone so um I might have frost up until Mother's Day. So at night, definitely I'm going to be covering this. Uh, so if I am putting the soil in, I this took about, for a four by eight bed, about 21 bags of one and a half cubic feet. Um, so you can also have uh, bulk delivered or you can just get it pre-mixed. All right, so we put the soil in. Um, I did water it to make sure that um, it settles. And I happened to do that last night. And I put the blanket with actually without the hoops on it um, to kind of start warming it up to plant. So that's a really, really good idea. When you would use the plastic is during the winter. So you can actually use this set up through the winter um, even when it's snowing, when the wind's blowing, hail, all that type of stuff, but you will have to secure it. All right, so um, let me think. Anything else that I need to tell you about? Oh, yeah, before we get started um, putting these seeds into the ground, I have a little bit of vermiculite that I'm going to set on top to um, help with aeration and drainage of the water. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I am doing the square foot gardening. That is great for students. If you have, gosh, if you do the math, you can have each student be responsible for each space. Or if you're planting with your family now, because we're doing this backyard project during um, our current situation and we just were asked to stay in as of last night at 11:59. so luckily i got all these materials um, beforehand but once we are out of this uh, these materials you can get and go ahead and um, put together and by the way i will be giving you a list of materials and how to um, information through my email and i'll give you that email here at the end all right, so with the seeds, um, I went ahead and picked a uh, lettuce. All right, this is one of my cool, cool weather seeds. And I have my plant marker here ready to go. And I am just going to focus. This is great for those people who are not going to be overwhelmed by all this. We're just going to focus on one at a time. And what I'm going to do, and I did it here, and I'm gonna do it here is just basically make three rows. And I've already planted over here, so what I'm going to do is put some seeds. This is a little bit harder for little kids, but um, that's why teachers and parents and older siblings can help. So I'm gonna take two or three, and I'm just going to put those right in there. 
about an inch apart, right? Some of the bigger seeds are easier. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that over here. And if you get too many, I'm looking out here and getting about the right amount that are coming out of my fingertips pretty well. All right, so that's good. I'm just gonna go ahead and put these back. And I have plenty of seeds left over that I can use. I'm really excited about some of these other things that I'm gonna be growing too, as you can imagine. So this is gonna help after I water to help absorb some of that. And I'm just gonna sprinkle that vermiculite right in there. Don't breathe in, <laughs> don't wanna breathe this in. All right, put that on top. And then I'm just gonna move it over slightly and just pat it. I did that over here already. So just pat it, move it in over here pat it, pat, and pat, and over all, and not to interrupt anything I'm doing here, I can put it on the edge, wherever you want to do it, I'm just for now going to put it right here by my Snail Kids sign, um, and here is some pictures too from, that I've worked with kids, you can see here when it's been snowing, and, um, and the next thing I'm going to show you is how they use and how you can use the plastic. So let's just say it's all planted, or maybe only get part of it planted, then go ahead and water that. So you would take the hose and obviously not a forceful flow, but a uh, very kind of light flow to water the whole bed. Right, this is great for kids to do. They love to do that. What, what kid doesn't? I don't, I've never met one who doesn't like to water. And I'm gonna take a look here. And we are 50 degrees. And I haven't looked at our temperature, how deep it's going or dip tonight, but I'm assuming it's gonna be pretty cold. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover it with the fabric. Why am I not using the plastic? Well, the fabric, you, this allows sunlight. If you decide to leave it on, it's colder tomorrow. Um, and then water, rain will actually enter through this fabric. That will not happen with the plastic. This is six mil plastic, it's heavy duty. This is what you would wanna use in the winter. Matter of fact, the schools that I've worked with often use the plastic, I'm sorry, the fabric and the plastic on top on those cold, cold, cold evenings. All right, so after that is planted, and this is not necessarily the right size. Actually, I have on order the right size for this, so you have to kind of measure things. Everything's dependent on the size of what your bed is going to be. I just like to use four by eight size. It's, you know, some kids can work or family members can work on one side, the other on the other side. So basically you're putting this over the whole bed and I'm not going to show, I think it's pretty obvious, but um, show you because it does take sometimes two people when it, the wind is blowing. But in this case what you would do is take your brick or in the case this is a fabric in this case and you can just put it through right through the ground here and through the fabric to secure it. Um, you can also use a brick, especially if you're using plastic, just use a, a brick. Doesn't have to be perfect as long as you're securing um, it so it doesn't blow off. Um, you're not gonna get a windy evening. It is good to go. Uh, ideally, you want the soil to warm up Ooh, about a week or so before you start this process and last but not least you would want to fence it in once those um, plants start to peak their heads up from the soil so that pretty much wraps it up I do want to give you um, my information I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and maybe come over here we've got some information here about this is one of my favorite books I can give you that information and if you're geeking out on this information it also um, all comes from Elliot Coleman and his um, season extension 
So I'm gonna lay this right down here for my gorgeous daughter to film and give you my information. And uh, hopefully I haven't forgotten anything and if you have any questions, that's what Slow Food Live is all about. So I can't wait to plant with you. Snail kids, ciao, ciao, ciao. Thank you so much, Cynthia. That was just perfect. And I, I w might say that your daughter did a really great job. <laughs> she did. Um, I don't know what I would do without her. What would mm -hmm. we do without our, our wonderful kids here at home? It's really a learning curve, but I think we're adjusting pretty well. Thanks. And my, and FedEx just drove by with my uh, fabric. So I have the right size. So I'm really excited. I do want to give you a couple production notes, if that's okay. Um, so I did make a mistake and said of saying the PVC pipes were eight inches. Those are actually cut to eight feet. So that, that makes more sense. Um, I do encourage you to get, um, your kids involved, uh, in building the bed as well, whether now or when you're back at school, um, the more the merrier and that just gets them engaged in the whole process. Um, I typically like to use cedar, not the untreated pine. Cedar is my go-to, but it is a special order item. So sometimes you have to kind of work with what you have. Um, the PVC pipes, the plastic, I have some concerns with that as well. I'd like to eventually get away from that. I'm always improving. We're always um, working with what we have, but at the same time looking to do um, more innovative things. Uh, the, the PVC doesn't touch the soil, so you don't have to worry about that coming in contact because it's on the outside. Uh, the plastic, um, if you have the fabric first and then the plastic, um, that's, that's a good thing too as well. And that was just a couple days ago. So I planted um, on March 24th and those are cool weather seeds. So uh, all this information I can send you. I have all the tools, the how-to. Um, I can give you all that information if you email me. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. And one quick question about where to get that, um, the agricultural fabric or plastic. And I think that would be a local garden store. With right, that. right. I happen, in, one of my favorite places to go is Menards um, because of that 11% rebate that you can use later, but Lowe's, any, anywhere, um, landscape, it's called a couple different things, but it's readily available. Perfect. Thank you so much, Cynthia. Thank okay. you. <laughs> and now we're going to fly south to Texas, where we're going to meet Kim Amon, and I will hand it over to her. Hello, everybody. I'm happy to be here today because we're doing some of my favorite things ever. I love to grow food. Um, I am the Slow Food USA School Garden Network co-chair. I also am the Slow Food um, governor in Texas. I work with American Heart Association in writing curriculum for their teaching garden program. Um, I'm the farmer at Moss Haven Farm, and I also work in Highland Park ISD schools and Grow North Texas and um, growing gardens in, um, in, in, other, in all, all over Dallas. Um, and so gardening is my game. Farmer Kim is my shtick. That's what the kids call me, so that's what I go by. My grandfather was a farmer in Ohio, and he would be really proud of me. Um, so, and, and growing food right now is probably one of the, the most important things that I do. I'm putting in gardens and all my friends' yards too. Um, in Texas, we are planting, it's 88 degrees today. And so our planting calendar starts in January. And um, we don't, I don't do a lot of seed starting because it warms up quick and we don't really need to do all that. So in my video, I'll show you kind of how to um, eat your yard how you can plant food all over it, how to grow a rate, how to build a raised bed um, with found objects, and then a little bit on how to plant um, the Farmer Kim way. So enjoy. Hey friends, welcome to my house in Dallas, Texas. Today I'm gonna show you a little bit about how to plant, but also how to eat your yard. So you really can carve out a lot of space in your yard if you have landscaping around. It's, it's really, uh, great to intermix um, food with your landscape and it's kind of pretty. Um, a tree fell down in this area so I decided to turn this into a garden. 
I've got dill, I've got rosemary, I've got sorrel, basil, Swiss chard, carrots, sugar snap peas, onion, tomatoes. Just I just randomly just kind of planted all over the place. I feel a little bit like Johnny Appleseed right now, but um, it's all good. It's gonna be beautiful and edible. Yum. I'm in my backyard today and I'm finding another place to build a garden. It's a perfect sunny spot. I don't have a lot of sun in my backyard, but right over here is the perfect place to start. Okay, so now I have my perimeter marked off. I'm gonna use the fence line and I'm just use some bricks that I found around my yard. I'll probably put a second layer on, but for now that is my new garden space. The sprinkler's right in the middle and in Texas that's important, so it'll get water. There is a vine growing in there that I think I'm just gonna remove. Um, and now it's time to dig a lot of grass, making sure to get the roots. I think I'll be fighting it, but it's go time for planting right now, so that's what I'm gonna do. So on another note, um, digging in wet soil is a little bit tricky. As you can see, my shoes are out of whack. But I do have a dog who's helping me dig holes, so hopefully she's getting the roots. Go, Jolene, go. Now I've got my bed um, cut out. The grass is mostly removed. I'm sure I'll be fighting it for some time. And I'm going to put some black um, agriculture cloth around the outside to try to discourage more grass from popping back up. An agriculture cloth, I use it in farms um, for the rows and also to plant uh, plants, um, even in the growing spaces, and then they cut holes in it. But I'm gonna use it around the border to try to keep the grass out. Grass is always a pain, weeds are always a pain. Um, gardening's not easy, but it's worth the, the effort. Okay, I got the agriculture cloth uh, ready to roll. You can see, I kind of put it inside the perimeter of the garden bed because it's Texas, it's um, St. Augustine grass, which tends to root and go. I'm pr still probably gonna have to deal with it, but later on I can roll it back um, once I get the, the grass under control. Um, and some places in the United States, it's not gonna be a problem because your grass doesn't, um, St. Augustine kind of creeps and, and vines and just takes off, it's, it, it goes crazy. So um, that's why I have to be pretty aggressive with my deterrent for grass. So in the fall, what I do with my um, leaves is I collect them, just I put them around my shrubs and bushes and, and that's where I put my leaves because I'm trying to make like a forest floor. You want to have a lot of uh, leaves around to help the bugs and just to keep your ground moist and it just is, it's beneficial. It's not going to the landfill. So um, today I'm going to gather up some of these leaves. I'm going to put those down as the first layer. So here's my completed layer of leaves. Notice it covers most of the ground. Any kind of um, organic amendment you can put in the garden is great. The next thing I'm going to do is add one more layer of brick and then I'm going to put in um, some compost. So I have access to some really great compost. Um, it's where food scraps and leaves and um, old plant scraps get put and then you layer it, you add water and air and thyme and you mix it and it comes up with beautiful amendments for the garden, which is, is really healthy. It's like you eating fruits and vegetables. This is like what compost is to the garden. So here's my beautiful compost. You can see it's all finished and ready to go, dark and rich, and that will help give nutrients to the plants. So I'll add that next. Next step is adding um, this raised bed organic um, soil to the leaves and the compost and mixing that all around to get the bed ready for planting. So after about three days of digging and building and now replenishing the soil, I am ready to get growing. So here's a little bit of what we're going to be growing today. Um, there's some cucumbers, tomatoes, lots of different kinds of peppers, shishitos, purple bell, jalapenos for sure. Um, I always plant marigolds um, in my garden because that brings in beneficial insects and keeps away the harmful ones. There's some eggplant. I'm going to do some lettuce. It's a little late in Texas to seed lettuce right now, but sometimes the weather cooperates and you can get a good harvest in the end of April, May. And then onions. Onions are a little late too, but they're a nice staple and you can pick them as green onions as well. So let's plant. different varieties of tomato plants. This is the Super Sweet 100. Small tomatoes in Texas um, are better because the squirrels don't get so much of them. And what I do, um, there's a million ways to skin a cat and a million ways to plant tomatoes. So what I always do is um, 
just snip off the bottom leaves like that. And what happens is when you plant, you give it more root structure so that it'll be more sturdy and hold lots of uh, to make them get pretty tall. So again, I dig a hole that's as big as my root ball. This is a little bit bigger. I peeled off some of the leaves and stems at the bottom and then I dug my hole. And so I lay it down underground like that and I stand it up a little bit like that. Oops. And then I tuck it in like that. And then it's ready to grow. Grow tomato, grow. Okay, so now when you plant other plants beside tomatoes, like this eggplant here, um, you dig a hole that's as deep as the root ball. You don't lay it on the side and trim the leaves like you did um, the tomato. So you just dig a hole, pop it in there, tuck it into bed. Bundles at the store. In Texas, we usually plant them in February, January, actually January. And I'm a little late, but I'm going to just go for it and see what happens. Um, they can always be green onions separate one out and what I always do is um, use my finger and dig a hole and then slip it in an onion slip and stand it up ta-da and then I'll do them in a row I planted them about um, an, an yeah, inch and apart dill, um, I just uh, lay down a little bit of it sprinkle it around and rub it in I'm kind of a gorilla gardener a little bit um, they're not very big seeds so you don't have to um, dig deep holes for them. So you really kind of just scatter them below the surface. Of dirty hands is a sign of a great day. So it's been a good day, a big day of gardening. I always forget to put my gloves on and this is what I always look like, but connecting to the earth uh, keeps you healthy for sure. So I'm going to take my seeds and I'm just going to scatter them in this area. Now some people are probably cringing, but this is how I do it and it works for me. And then I just gently rub, rub them in till I can't see them anymore and hope that they grow. Ta-da! Same thing with this lettuce mix. Now it's a little late to plant lettuce in Texas, but we'll just see what happens. The worst case scenario, I'll pull it out. So I encourage you guys to uh, grow a garden however you can with found parts, with raised beds, with pots, with windowsills. Just get growing. It makes you feel good and it's so delicious. It's the most nutritious food you can get. 100% organic and you did it yourself. Can't wait to hear from you. Good luck, happy gardening. Oh, look closely friends, it's a good sign. The snail's on our side for sure. Thanks so much, Kim. I'm gonna let you follow up on that if you have any more comments. Just perfect. I, everyone has a different way to grow different things and everyone will say their way or the highway and, and the one thing that you need to do is just try because there's a lot of mistakes to be made in gardening, but it teaches you to persevere. It teaches you to celebrate that really bountiful harvest of whatever and to uh, rise up against the bugs that, that harm your plants. So just keep trying and, and doing it and, and really look at what is happening in your um, region. There's different zones across the United States. Figure out what zone you're in, planting zone and that'll help you with your timing of when you're doing things. Um, like I said, in Texas, we plant pretty much year round and some places they don't start putting things in the ground till May. So um, just be aware of what that is. Talk to gardeners who you know, people in your world, contact the three of us because we have lots of contacts across the country who can give you advice in your growing area if we're not really quite sure of the answer, but just go out, plant a seed. Um, and the plant a seed kits are available right now from Slow Food USA. So grab some of those because those are great plants to plant. And thanks for having me today. Thanks so much, Kim. And I think we're so lucky because the three of you are in pretty different growing zones. So we get to see three different ways of doing this that are definitely 100% relative to where you are. So um, like Kim said, pay attention to which growing zone you're in. And um, there's a lot of enthusiasm for um, a little more, a little less precious approach to gardening. Just let it happen, give it a shot, do your best, <laughs> and something will grow. Um, we have a couple questions that came up. I wanna mention first though, that um, we're so lucky to have these three for more reasons than just where they are. And that is that they, are so active with the Slow Food USA School Garden Network, which is a robust and 
really wonderful network of school garden educators and other educators and young people um, that champions getting kids in the garden and teaching kids how to grow their own food for the myriad reasons why that's a, a great thing to do. So our Slowwood USA School Garden Network is really amazing. And if you're interested in getting involved, you can reach out to any of these three wonderful humans or to Slowwood USA. And I just want to send a quick expression of gratitude to the three of you for all that you do for the School Garden Network and for sharing this knowledge with all of us today. We are so lucky. So I'm just gonna throw out a few more questions. We have just shy of 10 minutes left. So I'm gonna throw out a couple of things that I saw a few times um, so we can expand on that. And I was gonna ask about regional differences, but I think Kim, you kind of covered that. One thing is, and maybe we'll throw this back to Neha, is how to differentiate between what I should start in flats indoors and what I can direct sow outside. So there are lots of things you can just direct sow outside. Um, cool weather crops are great, like carrots and peas and um, any type of greens, really, lettuces, um, um, chard, collards, things like that can go direct seed and carrots. Um, and then I, in our region, we really do have to plant nightshades early because they just take a longer time to grow and then you can transplant them in. So it just depends on what you're growing in your region. Um, there are, um, I, I do plant lettuce in flats and then I transplant them they, and they work for me um, because I like to kind of watch them grow and it's more fun for me. And then um, other critters sometimes don't have the chance of eating it before I do. So, um, so sometimes I'll do that, but it, it really just depends. You know, this is kind of, a lot of this is just like a science experiment, right? You just plant to see how it works for you. And so in Michigan, we can plant all kinds of things right now. Um, surprisingly, I know we're in the north, but we actually have such a great variety of things that we can plant. So beets are another great thing you can plant right now. Um, so, you know, I suggest if you don't have uh, the ability to seed start at home, go outside and do, you know, kind of what Kim was talking about, throw out some seeds and some spots and, you know, just till up a little bit of soil, not crazily, but just don't disturb all the microorganisms and the decomposers, but, you know, put some seeds in there and see what happens. I think that's the kind of exciting part about it and read your seed packets. They have information on there for a reason and they really um, tell you kind of, sometimes they have the region, um, the germination time, the rate, the temperature, what you need. So it's great to kind of look at those and there's great sites all over the place, especially um, for us, like Michigan State University Extension has great data out there on what to do on how to start seeds and they just have one pagers everywhere. There's lots of extensions that do that. Um, and so that, that those are great ways to get some information and data on how, you know, um, you can plant your seeds outside or in. Excellent. Thanks, Neha. And I know that I have like a small collection of garden books that I love and at least half of them, I'm in Oregon, so at least half of them are specifically for the Pacific Northwest. So this is a really great way for me to be like, I don't really remember if I can direct sow these or I need to start them early or when to start them. And so I have the Maritime Guide to Gardening, something like that in the Maritime Pacific Northwest. And I just pop in and it says, do these, these guys in April, these guys in March. So, and I know that Cynthia, you also mentioned you're the Ohio State Extension Service. I lean pretty hard on the Oregon State Extension Service. It's a super great resource for regionally specific um, information for gardening. Thank you, Neha, perfect. I'm gonna move on to one more. Um, and I'm gonna send this one to Cynthia. Um, I love, I have extra little thermometers like that. So I'm definitely gonna go stick mine in the garden. Now I never thought of that. But some questions about the importance of temperature and what are we looking for? And I think Neha, maybe you can follow up or Kim on the heat mat. So why do we want them to be warm? What difference does it make? And what if I don't have a heat mat? Although I did order one and it's arriving today, I'm very excited. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, what is the importance of that temperature? I know that Cynthia, you covered that a little bit because we had you outside, right. but what are we looking for? Well, for instance, if you're gonna um, grow carrots, which I don't know if I would start with carrots, I would start with lettuces and something a little bit more easy and also something a little bit more quick growing because you're gonna see results quicker. And if the results are not happening, then you can plant something else. 
but um, yeah, like for carrots, um, they like a certain temperature, although they like the cool temperatures. And matter of fact, they taste much better if it is very, very cold. Um, so you would just look and Google and see what the range would be for the soil. So air temperature, soil temperature. So I just have like a, a meat thermometer that goes into the soil so I can say, oh, it's about 45 degrees. It's about 60 degrees. Is that what carrots like? Okay, if um, that's what carrots like, this is, this is good. Now for square foot gardening, that limits you a little bit. So I don't, that is just one way to grow. So maybe you wanna do a half of the side of the bed or another bed carrots and kind of experiment it's all an experimentation um, to see what's going to grow um, and then once you get the cover over then you're going to be using that thermometer to tell how warm it is under the tunnel so if it gets about 65 degrees outside, just imagine what it's going to be like inside under that tunnel. Um, for the plastic, you're probably gonna get up to at least 80 degrees and that's not going to be good because you'll, you'll come later in the day and things will be fried. Um, so if you use a lighter fabric, like a 19 um, grade, then you're going, it's thinner, you're going to uh, allow um, it, not as much heat to be trapped. So going back to that greenhouse effect that uh, Neha was talking about. So it is quite the experiment. Um, if you feel overwhelmed about all the different seeds, my recommendation is to maybe uh, narrow it down to about three and all of them having similar conditions that they like to grow in. And a little bit to add on to that, uh, the, seed, the seed mat that I use, the reason I use it is to speed up the germination rate, really. I mean, what you're, what you're getting with the seed mat is, um, you know, kind of 10 to 20 degrees above air, ambient air temperature. And when you put the dome on it, it just creates a greenhouse effect, which just is so nice and warm kind of like a baby coming out of the womb they're in this warm environment right and that's that's what they want they want that to germinate and they'll germinate pretty quickly once the seeds pop out you don't have to have the dome on there anymore if you don't have a dome um you know the the kitchen way to do it is to actually put it in a plastic bag lots of you go shopping all of you know and you might get a plastic bag so you can put it in there um put it near a vent just don't put it on a cold floor or something like that because it's it wants to be warm but you need to check on them so once you see them popping out you can take them out just keep them you know maybe you want to keep your air temperature in your home warm i keep my house pretty cold um and i try to be as ener energy efficient as i can so that's why i use those is to control the environment for them but once they're out um you know generally i just kind of leave them be um i use the mats at night um sometimes i'll cover them at night depending on how cold it is um because our temperatures change pretty quickly here so it's it's all really um like we always say just try it and see uh, but i think if you just have a tray and you have some, you know, a plastic bag, try that. Perfect. Thank you both. And um, in, it's just about the, on the hour right now. So I'm going to ask one more question so that we can send everybody off to go work on their gardens. And I'm going to send this to Kim, which is, you said, this is a good little spot in my garden to, in my yard to do this. So what should we look for? What is the ideal spot in my yard? Um, from what direction should the sun be coming? What should I look for as sort of a red flag? Not a great spot. Um, and I think, you know, the seeds, we can see Neha's seeds behind her right in front of the window. So we want, they want that light. But then when we send them out to the garden, what are we looking for to pick the perfect spot? So gardens, the more sunshine you give them, the better for sure. So they say six to eight hours a day, but if you can give more than that, that's great. But that should be your minimum. For most plants, some food like kale and um, some greens can do well in lower light. But for optimum plant growth, I would recommend six to eight hours. Um, southern facing gar um, gardens um, in the southern part of your house is the better um, way to grow. I wouldn't do anything like right up next to your house because your house is going to shade the garden. 
and it will not capture the sunshine. Um, I do want to say gardens don't always look beautiful. Um, it's not the arboretum, you're growing food. So, you know, plant some flowers along with it, but there are times of the year where the garden does get unruly and out of control. Um, but that just gives you work to do. Uh, so be mindful of that. And, um, and I, I think that's, that's probably the key thing is Southern exposure in six to eight hours a day. And close to, you know, be mindful about where your water source is too, because you don't want it to be difficult to water, um, to grow your garden or sometimes the summer takes over and you lose. So, um, just keep it up, keep up the fight and, um, you know, talk to other gardeners because they, they're, there's lots of wisdom and people that have done it before. Call your grandparents. 